I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, I need to take a roll call because there's only four people here in person. Uh, Jen Liptak, Jen, are you on virtually? Jen? Okay, uh, Senator Brewster? Uh, Representative Piscatano? Okay, Joe Totten is here, John Pegg's here, Stephanie Terman. Here. Allie Doyle. Here. And Michelle Mismanic is here. Um, we may be short of quorum. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a quorum, um, but we're short the number of members we need to vote to okay. take affirmative action on matters pending. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Devlin here. Jeff, can you tell if they're just not hearing me, if they're on? Huh. Okay. Well, we'll go through we'll go through the every agenda, and when it comes to votes, we may not take them. <laughs> yeah, we can we can do not yeah, hearing, uh, uh, agenda uh, items. Jen and somebody join. Senator Brewster. Oh, my, my notes. Uh, okay. Uh, All right, Catherine, do you want to give you a report? Oh, wait, first, I, well, I can't even do approval in the minutes. So why don't you give you a report? A okay. And uh, our chief legal officer is working to make sure that any board members we have are reaching out to Congress. It's always a good idea to get a lawyer involved and things can happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pay for something then, won't I? Um, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, may I please have a moment of silence for the following retirees who have passed away since last we met. Operators William Michael, Donald Coltus, Leonard Simmons, Daniel Tagalo, Frank Sedonik, and Wayne Ludwig. In service persons Gary Kunkel and Kenneth Grattan. Thank you. I want to welcome everybody to construction season. Uh, we're now in our third week since we transitioned to working in the downtown subways full time. There were a few confused riders in the first couple of days. Uh, it's been pretty smooth sailing since. So we are doing plinth work at Wood Street Station, which means our trains run to Steel Plaza and then out to Penn Station. On the north side, they're running to Gateway, but we're not coming to Wood Street. Uh, if we continue to do weekends on Wood Street, we would be shutting down the station on weekends probably for two years. Once we factor in the weekends, we would be open for Steelers games and events, or we could pull the plug and just shut down one station for several weeks and get the work done. Uh, the next phase of our project will be a grade crossing replacement in South Hills that will create delays on all three rail lines near St. Anne for about a month. Again, this is a safety thing. We, we don't have an option. It is time to make these repairs. Starting in mid-June, crews will begin the biggest part of our project with closure of the red line through the end of August. Red line trips will run over the blue line and we will be running a rail shuttle back and forth between Dormont Junction to Overbrook Junction. We'll also have two temporary bus shuttles, the 42 Potomac, which will run down Broadway Avenue in Beachview and on West Liberty Avenue to Station Square. Uh, and the 37 Castle Shannon will be back and it will run down Castle Shannon Boulevard and West Liberty Avenue to Station Square. Uh, we are ending up doing five projects on the red line with one closure. And again, if the choice is single track and inconvenience folks for five projects end on end, or do everything at one time and do our best effort to make sure folks can get connected so we can get all the work done and maximize construction season, that's why we've made this investment. It's part of our $150 million capital plan over the next couple of years that are very strongly focused on rail safeties and improvements. Today, dozens of riders are transferring for free to shuttles that are operating between Penn and Gateway stations. And throughout the summer, we expect hundreds, if not thousands more, will need to transfer to Overbrook Junction or Station Square because of the construction on the red line. So we are proposing making the shuttle buses on the red line and the rail, red line rail shuttle free for the duration of the project. Uh, it is a good idea and we definitely heard it back from the community. So um, we're very happy to make that recommendation to our board today. Uh, if approved by the board, free transfers would start about June 16th and end around August 31st. 
Free transfers won't reduce delays, but we do hope it reduces a little bit of the heartburn and not to mention again, it's the right thing to do. Until then, we're using wayfinding and informational signage in English and Spanish to ensure that all our riders, whether they need to transfer or not, know how to go where they're going. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Earth Day, which is celebrated every April 22nd to demonstrate and support for envi environmental protection. Transit agencies play an outside role in this and that the, act the, the individual's contribution to greenhouse gases, in most cases, is how you commute, and we take on a big chunk of that. This Earth Day, we celebrated by unveiling our agency's first climate action plan, our first roadmap to our zero emissions future, and a tool for seeking new funding to complete the journey in the decades to come. Uh, climate change is clearly one of the biggest challenges we face today, and our region has grappled with the detrimental effects of poor air quality for decades. The actions prescribed in the Climate Action Plan will help us remain resilient, regardless of the challenges we face. I want to thank our internal and external stakeholders who have helped develop this plan over the last year and who make this plan a reality. Together, we can work toward a greener, more sustainable future. We can have a greener, more sustainable future, one that's defined by innovation, collaboration, and where our agency leads change toward a cleaner, brighter future for everybody. Uh, Mr. Chair, unless there are questions, that concludes my remarks. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, thank you, Kevin. All right, now we can move with approval of the minutes. So um, we have the opportunity to see the minutes of the March 22nd regular meeting. I have a motion for their approval. Motion. Any uh, objections? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. And uh, with that, our procedure with public comment is if there is a topic that we're going to be voting on, then that speaker on, on that particular topic will go before we vote. So at this point, I'll call Laura Perkins, who will be speaking on an issue we're going to be taking under vote today. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for um, for everything that you do. I know it's not easy and you put in a lot of work, so I really appreciate it. Um, I know I've been up here and I've been pretty critical in the past, so I'm delighted um, to be here in a more positive light. Um, I just want to, I'm, I'm here to express gratitude. Um, I work at Casa San Jose. I'm the human rights organizer at Casa San Jose. I work with um, Latino immigrants primarily uh, that speak Spanish and other languages. And um, I've just I've noticed a real shift in uh, my relations uh, with people that work at PRT, um, specifically people in this room. Um, and I'm really appreciative of that. Um, I really want to shout out Jim Ritchie. Um, he asked for a meeting with me in January and um, we started talking about language access on public transit. And I found that um, these meetings have been productive and just full of respect. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, we had a uh, PRT had a community meeting in Beachview on March 21st. Um, a lot of people in this room were present um, and it was a, an amazing meeting. It was so well done and it really listened to the community and um, again, was just full of respect and, and really um, prioritized the community's needs. Um, so thank you to everyone that was involved in that meeting. Um, one thing that did come up was uh, the fact that a lot of our community members, especially immigrants, pay in cash uh, because they don't have um, they don't have bank accounts because they're still in the process. They're newly arrived to this country. And so um, we, uh, Casa San Jose and I believe other groups here um, do support uh, the, the two bus routes that are replacing the red line. If those could be free, um, otherwise folks that pay in cash don't get that free transfer. Um, and if that would mean actually paying three times potentially to get to a final destination, if once they get downtown, uh, they have to transfer to a bus route. So um, we are very much in favor of that for our community. Um, I also wanted to highlight um, the uh, reduced fares program um, is still in process um, through, the, uh, um, through DHS, um, human services that is. Um, and we continue to really uh, be thankful for that program, um, but we would love to see it as free uh, free fares and not half fares. Um, so again, thank you to everyone. Um, I'm really happy uh, about um, the steps that um, PRT has been taking for accessibility, especially with our immigrant and non-native English speaking communities. And thanks to everyone who's been a part of that. Thank you. It's refreshing to get a positive. <laughs> Uh, okay, with that, we're going to move on to the report of the Performance and Oversight Committee. 
from Michelle Zemanik, it's chair. Good morning, Mr. Chair. The Performance Oversight Committee met last week and I have four resolutions for the board's consideration. The committee first reviewed three procurement items and determined the bids to be in accordance with PRT's procurement policies and procedures and prices to be fair and reasonable. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends the award of bids listed in the resolution for the total amount of approximately one point four million dollars. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. May I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Next is a resolution extending an agreement for professional safety consulting and security management system services. In June 2020, an agreement was entered into with K&J Safety and Security Consulting Services Incorporated for three years in a total not to exceed the amount of $860,000 and then extended an additional year to June 30th, 2024 with no increase to the total not to exceed amount. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the agreement with K&J Safety and Security Consulting Services Incorporated to June 30th, 2025, with no increase to the previously authorized total not to exceed amount. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. May I have a motion? The second? Second. Yeah, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. The next resolution is to authorize PRT to enter into deed of easement and right of way agreements with the Pennsylvania American Water Company or PAWC. PAWC owns, operates, and maintains a water line perpendicular to and beneath PRT's tracks near the intersection of Edgebrook Avenue and Reflectorville Road in the city of Pittsburgh. The current PAWC water line is within a permanent easement and a right of way granted to PAWC by PRT in 1985. PAWC is involved in a water main replacement project and wishes to abandon the existing line and replace it with a new line to be located in an adjacent location. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends PRT enter into a new easement and right-of-way agreement with PAWC for the relocated line. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board to approve this resolution. May I have a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. PRT has determined that it would be beneficial to provide supplemental employee assistance program support services, including an on-site licensed and certified professional counselor. A request for proposals was publicly advertised and one proposal was received. Staff followed the procedures for when a single proposal is received and it was determined that the appropriate and reasonable efforts had been undertaken to solicit proposals and that the requirements of the RFP were not restrictive. The staff following applicable procurement procedure determined that the UPMC Benefit Management Services LLC, I'm sorry, Management Services Incorporated, doing business as work partners, submitted an acceptable proposal and is qualified to perform the services. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends entering into an agreement with work partners for a total not to exceed amount of up to $347,000 for $347,733 for an initial term of three years with one two-year extensions to the agreement. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. May I have a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, before we get to the next report, I just want to acknowledge uh, for the minutes that Senator Brewster is in attendance. <clears throat> With that, uh, we'll move on to the report of the Planning and Stakeholder Relations Committee from John Taggart, Chair. Uh, good, good morning, Mr. Chairman, fellow uh, board members and stakeholders. The Planning and Stakeholders Relations Committee met last week. I want to thank Stephanie Terman for chairing the committee in my absence. I have a few items for the board. First, Director of Planning and Service Development, Derek Dolphin, updated the committee on the bus line redesign project. The comprehensive bus network study will 
how uh, show how PRT can better deploy its resources. PRT gathered input from the community operators and stakeholders and are developing a draft proposal that will be unveiled later this year. There will be at least two public reviews before the plan is implemented in 2025 or 2026. The second item, manager of corridor planning, Seth Davis presented the final homestead to McKeesport corridor plan. This plan aims to improve the safety, accessibility, and reliability through the corridor between Homestead and McKeesport. The plan includes several intersection redesigns, bus stop, and infrastructure improvements. BRT will continue to work with the partner agencies to finalize the plan and fund construction. The third item, the Allegheny County Transit Council met on April 24th. Director of Planning and Service Development, Derek Dolphin, provided the council with an update on the bus line re redesign. The next scheduled ACTC meeting is on May 22nd. Uh, the fourth and final item, uh, the Committee for Accessible Transportation did not meet in April, although their next scheduled meeting is for May 2nd. Uh, Mr. Chairman, unless there's questions, that concludes my report. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Tigg? Okay, thank you, John. With that, we'll move on to the report of the Finance Committee. Uh, today's chair will be Joe Taunton in Aaron O'Gorick's absence. Joe. Good morning, Mr. Chair and fellow board members. Finance Committee met on Thursday, April 18th, and I have three items to report. The first is a resolution seeking authorization to waive fares for the summer 2024 Red Line project in Bus Rail Seattle's. From approximately June 16th, 2024 through approximately August 31st, 2024, PRT will close a portion of the red line with a group of projects to repair and replace portions of the track as they are completed. To ensure cash paying riders do not pay an additional full cash fare when utilizing the bus and rail shuttles, the Finance Committee recommends that PRT waive the collection of fares on the two bus shuttle routes and the red line short rail shuttle during the duration of the project. A final note on this item, at last week's Finance Committee meeting, the commencement date of the closure of the portion of the red line was incorrectly reported to be April or July 16th, 2024. But as I just mentioned, the closure is actually slated to begin on June 16th, 2024. My fellow board members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. I have a motion. I move. I'll take that in a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Next, PRT CFO Dominica Brown presented the preliminary financial year 2024 operating and capital budgets, which included some assumptions and uncertainties, such as the anticipated additional funding PRT will receive from the Commonwealth. Ms. Brown reiterated that these are preliminary budgets and the staff will bring together the final budget to the board for approval in May. Finally, the following is a review of March financial results presented at last week's meeting. It was reported that total operating income for the month of March was under budget by about half a million dollars due to lower passenger access and advertising revenue. Total expenses for the month of March were below budget of 2.4 million due to lower wages and benefits, purchase services and material expenses. Total operating income is 6.8 million higher than last fiscal year through March due to higher passenger revenue and interest income. Total expenses through March is Total expenses through March are 20.2 million higher than last fiscal year due to higher expenses in every category except utilities. Total subsidy is 93.7 million higher than last fiscal year due to higher invoicing of federal stimulus and preventative maintenance. As of March 2024, the total remaining federal stimulus balance is 51 million of CRRSAA funds. Finally, it was reported that PRT ended the month of March with approximately 376.2 million in cash reserves. Unless there are any questions or comments, that concludes the finance report. Are there any questions or comments? Thanks, Joe, for stepping in. You'll get a bonus for your on your compensation here. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the report of the Technology Committee from Jen Lip Package Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Technology Committee met on April 18th. I just have one item for today. The resolution presented is for a wide area of fiber network services, which connect the various agency offices and garage locations to each other over the internet. 
The proposed contract includes the, the 12 existing connected locations and 24 defined future BRT stations. The contract is with Crown Castle Fiber LLC, is to be recommended with a total not to exceed amount of $4,902,221. It's a five-year contract with two option years. Um, the committee concluded that the service is needed and the prices are fair and reasonable and respectfully we recommend this to the full board for approval. May I have a motion? Because of the second, any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, we have no new business, so we're going to go move into public comments. Just want to remind our speakers that we have a three minute limit on our uh, public comments. And so I have to apologize in advance if I have to rudely cut you off. You'll forgive me, but I, we do enforce this uh, time limitation. <clears throat> With that, our first speaker is Amy Zace. Amy, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. Amy Zeiss or Amy Zeiss. Zeiss, Zeiss is the right way? Okay. Okay, um, with that, then we'll move on to Frank uh, Pletz Jr. Frank? Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. Okay. Um, I practiced this standing up, so I'm going to stand up if that's all right with you guys. Fine. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Frank. I'm just your average bus riding citizen here in the Berg, and I'd like to thank everyone for hearing me out today. Um, I'd like to preface my address with uh, the fact that I've been riding public transportation since I was in the fifth grade. So I feel I have some authority to speak on this subject. Now, now that everyone's got a little background, I'd like to get to the point. I have an idea for what I feel would be an effective and affordable advertising appeal, a clarion call, so to speak. My idea is this, a simple turn of phrase, Pittsburgh Regional Transit, the best place to practice good manners. To this point, I've made a, my own little poster. It's, it's not, not a very good artist, but um, so I'd like to see this slogan posted on and in buses and also on the transit shelters. It's just 11 words, but I feel this simple statement could go a long way to improve the riding experience for both the passenger and the driver. I'd like to cite an example from my own personal experience. A while ago, I lived down in the United States Virgin Islands. Down there, your bus, most of the time in reality, was in a Ford F-350 modified with bench seats and a canopy for sun and rain. More often than not, a person getting on the bus would literally greet the entire bus. They'd say, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and the majority of the passengers would respond in kind. The first couple of times I thought this fairly odd, but soon I found myself greeting the bus too. And now, now it might sound a little un inconsequential. Often, but this this um this little back and forth it softened my mood and it gave me a positive attitude. So in, in closing, I'd like to say three more things. I'd like to see my idea come to fruition. I, I feel it would be effective because like going to a good restaurant where you have a great meal, you have to go back and that would increase ridership. And then uh, lastly, I'd like to thank you guys and everyone else for um, listening to me today. And uh, if you need any help in instituting this advertising plan, I'm looking for work. Thank you, thank you very much for your time. Okay, our next speaker is Andrew Hussein. Andrew, I know you're not here. Are you online? Yes. Go ahead, you're on. All right, good morning. Um, I'd like to start with saying that I, it's nice to see the uh, resolution here this morning for the uh, beach few shuttles and that, although I would prefer that payment be an optional matter rather than a hardline stance one way or the other. But that said, still good to see the uh, resolution this morning. However, moving on, I know that PRT has been dealing with ongoing operating short operator shortages and uh, reliability issues for service, particularly We've been seeing again recently another round of a lot of routes having multiple 
scripts at once out of service. I know personally I've been experiencing this week four times this week in the PM rush hour periods where there's 45 minutes, an hour, 90 minutes between buses on the 77 because of delays or operator shortages or whatever. So I would continue to urge PRT to continue to aggressively try and address operator shortages, operating issues, and boosting service, especially if we're trying to not only regain rider confidence, but retain the confidence for the Beachview neighborhood, for example, in the upcoming summer debolic bowl that is yet to come because right now not a lot of confidence is being instilled in the agency with this continued uh service issue so i hope there's a real push to uh address that and i thank you for your time this morning thank you andrew <clears throat> i understand amy likes to join the call so amy you you want to take your your spot now to speak. Good morning. Can you hear me now? We can. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time this morning. And I, I apologize. Um, I didn't have time to fully prepare my remarks, but um, I felt um, important to, um, much like Laura, I wanted to thank the board. And I know I've, um, I've been here many times, often with critical remarks. Um, and as a resident of Beachview, I want to echo uh, Laura Perkins' earlier remarks and um, thank the, the leadership and the staff at PRT for the community meeting and the outreach and communication regarding the ups, upcoming work that's required. Um, and I, I just want to echo Laura's point that I, I feel that um, there's been a, a noticeable shift um, and I appreciate the um, outreach to the community and you all hearing our concerns. Um, I also want to thank you for um, today passing the motion to make those fares free. Um, that's definitely an, an important thing for our community and I think also for uh, just goodwill building. Um, and uh, I guess uh, to, to wrap things up, I also wanted to um, again, just uh, raise the issue of, um, of uh, communication. Um, I know that there's been talk about uh, what's been discussed as disruption management uh, communications and um, hopefully better real-time tracking. Um, this is something that's been talked about a lot. And also I know that there's um, talk about increasing support hours. Um, I just wanna remind everyone, I guess that um, those of us who are paying attention are really interested in seeing those things um, come through fr fruition as well. Um, so I very much look forward to hearing more information on that and I hope that it um, is able to come soon. Um, but again, uh, thank you for all the work that was done on the community meeting and um, outreach regarding the upcoming closures. Thank you. It's a shame we have a small crowd when we get these great uh, great reactions. Uh, but uh, Ed, uh, Ed Blazina, I hope you're noting these positive things. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll bring on Joy Dory. <clears throat> Joy. And more time, Joy Dory. Okay, uh, Kaylin Luciano. One more time, Kaylin Luciano. Last call, Kaylin. Okay, well, uh, we appreciate the positive comments. We should probably suspend the time on, on those particular comments. <laughs> In any event, our next regular meeting is uh, Friday, May 24th. And unless there are any questions or comments, we will stand adjourned. <laughs>